Sports. We've got some NBA action for you coming up. Alongside Greg Anthony, Coach Stan Van Gundy, and our reporter, the Hall of Famer David Aldridge, I'm Kevin Harlan. And tonight, we'll be joined by the man with his finger on the pulse of the NBA, no one better than Shams Charania. Shams, it is so great to have you courtside with us. Well, Kevin, thank you so much. Talking basketball is what I, and honestly, we were born to do, so let's do it. And look at the guys by our side. Man, we all love this game. Let's go right into it. Both teams tonight dealing with some injuries. Here's a look at who's out for the evening. And it feels early to be already missing players from the lineup. But how these teams respond will impact the outcome of this game. Let's take a look at our starters for Sacramento. DeRozan and Murray slot in at the small and power forward. Fox is at the point. Monk out on the wing. And it's Len in at the five down low. And for the Hawks, in the post, it'll be Johnson and Okongwu. Young is out there with Reza Shea. And it's Porter in at the small forward. And Charms, the whole Sacramento franchise has been transformed under former coach of the year, Mike Brown. Uh, he has the keys to the city at this point. But can it continue, do you think? Well, he's brought a great level of excitement and stability to the franchise. The team is competitive. They've got some young talent on this team. There hasn't been this much optimism in decades, and a lot of that is because of Mike Brown and the championship pedigree he's brought to this organization. And they just signed him to a three-year contract extension, so they have their sights on him for a while. 100%, and you know lifelong Kings fans have to be loving the stability, first and foremost, that he's brought in this organization. Finally seems like they're on the track. Well, throughout his career, DeRozan has lived that free throw. This is his first free throw of the game. Yeah, he wasn't someone you wanted to foul if you were defending him last season. 85% is what he made from the line. And he makes the first. Tamar DeRozan hits them both. Here's Young against Washington. He was really on his game. Here he goes. Now in the scoring column with that bucket. One for two this game. Look, that's what you want. Young is just so good when he penetrates. Back to Fox. Over Young. And Fox gets it to go. And this team looking to get him the ball and get him in rhythm quickly. Yeah, it's a good start for him. Let's see if they can keep getting him the ball in that area. Now, here is Young. Porter kicks to Johnson. Okongwu with the screen for Porter. Good for the basket. Starting off one for one with that shot. And making it look easy. Even with aggressive coverage, Porter Jr. finds a way to score. Monk outside. Six on the shot clock. And that one, no good to start him off on the night. The Hawks have gone two or three here to start out the game. Young's shot is off. The Kings have gone one of three for the field to start this one so far. It's up a three, and it's Monk that time on the assist by Fox. Hey, Shams, no one is keyed on the league like you. Is there an under-the-radar trend that you're seeing around the NBA or the next thing that you're anticipating may happen with the way the league will sway one way or the other? Talking to executives around the league, it's clear that length has been very important, but having players that do multiple things and are versatile 
that is of the utmost importance right now. We saw what happened with Self winning a championship this year. I think that certainly is going to have an impact on how teams are going to build moving forward. Like the Celtics, you want to have players, three to five players that are playing heavy minutes for you that are doing everything out there on the floor, not just one particular move. You get the sense Fox just improving with each game in terms of his pick and roll play, figuring out his angles, knowing when to pull and when to try to split or turn the corner. Now, here is Young. Outside, Porter. He trains it as the shot clock ticks down. Well, Porter Jr. with great awareness of the shot clock there. And so Fox will bring it up for the Sacramento Kings. Glenn with a screen on Young. Three-pointer, Fox. Rebound by the Hawks. This game against Sacramento is the first time they've met this season. And their series last year was a bit of a comparison between the two conferences. Both were in the middle of the pack. A wiry athlete, Jalen Johnson. Two loud points. The ball movement here by the Kings. Fox, no good. The Hawks have gone 5 of 7 today so far. Nice shooting to get this game underway. Okongwu picks the young. Chums, with as often as you've interacted with front offices all over the NBA, have you noticed any changes with how franchises operate with both the players and the media in that relationship and where it may be headed? Everything has to be more specialized now in the organization, but you're seeing true partnerships develop with teams and their players, especially their top players. Teams have to pay more attention now to data, to metrics than ever before. And the relationship between your top players in the organization, that is very, very important. And the teams that do a good job of managing relationships, of managing expectations, that is clearly what separates the elite teams with the bottom teams. And certainly players in today's generation are very, very polished when it comes to the media. Oh, you frame that so well. Steps back. And Fox gets it to go. Fox has got six. And, and Fox starting to show you his abilities inside. It has quick instincts, which I think helps him when he's down low. Now, here is Young. Johnson outside. That's the three fly. That's in coming off the assist from Young. He has five. And that's exactly what he's looking for. Draining. A moment now to hear from our sideline reporter, Hall of Famer, David Alton. David. Kevin, Michael Porter Jr. was the number one ranked player in high school, but the back injury changed things. He said, my potential may look different now, but as long as I can truly say what I had, I gave it my all, that's all that success should be defined by. Kevin grounds himself in gratitude and the work he's put in. Thanks, D.A. He is a worker and living the dream. Now, here's Porter. 33 points last game. Basket counts. Well, looking slippery there off the drive. Porter Jr. takes advantage. And in last year's playoff, Shams, we did see a lot of players injured and unable to play. What are some of the solutions that may be being talked about that you hear about? People certainly ask if this is the result of the 65 game rule. Is it the more physical play? Is it the consequences of the regular season? The league is going to take a wait and see approach to determine if this is an issue they have to fix, but they do love the results of what this has brought as far as player availability moving forward. Yeah, they do seem sold on that 65 number, don't they? 100%, and at the end of the day, some of these injuries are flukish. There's a lot of, obviously, lower body injuries, and you can't measure that. I think the league is going to want to see more data over the next five to 10 years to really determine, does this rule impact the game and impact injuries? They should continue to get the ball inside. The defense struggling to contain them. And Mike Brown decides to call timeout. And coach has decided they need a moment to talk things over.
for the Kings. Trey Lyles comes in for Keegan Murray, and it's Ellison for Monk. Here's Fox. He's got six. And the league continuing, Johns, to tweak the rules around replay review. But uh, would you set a time limit to maybe tweak? Some of these games, the way they're ending, it's something to try if you can't find a cause to really overturn in a minute or two. Let's keep this game moving. I think we all love a free-flowing game. I agree. With so many great point guards in this league, sometimes a guy like De'Aaron Fox can be overlooked, but when he's on, no one can stay in front of that man. Now, here is Young. He has six. Stolen by Ellis. Here's DeRozan. Good, and the assist goes to Ellis. DeRozan. Yeah, you love the confident mindset of DeRozan. Not afraid to pull up off the dribble. Now, Reza Shane. Pass to Williams. We've got 155 left in the first quarter. Down to five on the shot clock. Now, here's Bamba, guarded by Lynn. Oh, this is exactly the kind of opportunity you don't want to waste. By now, I'd send it over to the sidelines and get a report from David Aldridge. Well, earlier I spoke with Quinn Snyder. I want to ask him about the challenges his team will face going up against DeMar DeRozan. Coach said, it doesn't matter what kind of defense you throw at him. DeMar is so good getting to his comfort zones and knocking down shots. What people don't realize is how good of a playmaker he is. Kevin, a tall task to slow him down. Okay, David, much appreciated. Shots good from Young. Guys, his consistency in terms of shooting has really helped them seize control. Ellis outside. Fox against Young. Off on the lane. Another miss. He is struggling for the court. Williams dishes to Young. Shoots over Len, and it's good off the back of the rim and in. And now a five-point Hawks lead. We'll see if they want to trade two for one here. Got to time up that clock to do so. Fox kicks to Lyles. Back to Fox. Pass to Lyles. And here's DeRozan. 11-point game is last outing. And DeRozan, an excellent passer. Finding his open teammate. The Hawks leading by three. Young with the ball. He's got ten. To the wing on the left. Here's Roddy. Here's Bumba. Buried from outside. And I don't know. I think we may see a review here. It was pretty close. And it looks like they... The previous play is under the... Good off in time. And even though, you know, you're thinking maybe we don't need the replay in a situation like this, still plenty of time left in this game, and really it's about getting the call right. The ruling on the floor is confirmed. And the keeping the call is his. It was close, but he had not released it before the clock had expired. Yeah, still better safe than sorry. I think they did the right thing to take another look at it. And if it's so close that you can't tell by the naked eye, I might as well go to the slow-mo. Trey Young, he's feeling it tonight and has been the driving force for the Hawks. He got into double digits for the quarter with 10 points total. We'll take a quick break and then back to the action here. It's been a pretty even game here after one quarter of play. And let's take a moment, guys, to get your take on the scoring so far for the Hawks. Well, a lot of times you'll hear coaches yell, get the ball inside. 
and you can see why. Good things happen when you get the ball into the paint. And also, they're doing something you don't see as much anymore, and that is converting time and time again from the mid-range. Well, we can all agree nothing better than the atmosphere of an NBA game. So, Shams, I, I know it's hard to pick one, but is there a best crowd, a best atmosphere in the NBA that you've come across that you really appreciate? The Warriors fans, I feel, even at their peak, they bring a different level of aura, of enthusiasm. Kevin, you've been to more arenas than I have in more celebrated times as well at different points. What's your favorite, what's your best NBA arena? When that New York crowd is popping, that arena is second to none, man. It is sizzling. Like you, I love knowledgeable fans, right? They know the calls, they know the officials, they know the strategies, they know what a player can and cannot do. That, to me, is the best part about going in some of these arenas and feeling that the players, uh, you know, have, have made it to a point where the fans know exactly what they can and cannot do. Knowledgeable fans. I'll take your word for it, but that just means I have to get out to a Knicks game ASAP. <laughs> Bamba is out there with Williams. Then it's Porter. Then it's Daniels. And it's Pumpkin in at the two. That's the group starting the second quarter for the Hawks. More good work on the glass there. When it's all said and done, I think rebounding might tell the story in this game. Here is Daniels. Nothing on the board. They get it again. A second chance effort. The kick out to Porter. Pass to Bufkin. Five to shoot. And he hits it just before the shot clock expires. The Kings trail by four. Murray outside. Quarter number two. We're about two minutes in. Here's McLaughlin. Again, the miss by the Kings. Finding space on the perimeter, but he couldn't capitalize. And as the salary cap looks set to rise significantly, Shams, any major effects that you can anticipate? It won't be like the year the Warriors signed KD. They're going to smooth the cap numbers, and it's not going to spike quite the same. But these numbers will continue to get eye-popping when you think about player salary. And you have to keep in mind luxury tax and the new second apron that came into play with the collective bargaining agreement. And that will play a part in how teams build. Now putting yourself in a restrictive position to continue to build winning organizations. A lot of moving parts to contend with, but boy, a lot on the horizon. Now here's Murray. His last outing, he had 18 points. And you like Murray as a spot-up shooter. Knows where to park himself and always ready to receive the pass. Porter is screen on Ellis. Outside Porter. Over in the corner, Williams. Porter in time. He's defended by Herter. Got it off in time and beat the shot clock, but it's no good. Yeah, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to shoot his way out of this one or not. Pass to Wiles. Herter with it for three. Another three for Sacramento. And if you're the guy who has to guard him, it is never going to be an easy night for you. Just under three and a half minutes played here in the second quarter. And that one's good by Porter. And how's that for an answer? Porter Jr. coming right back at the defense. Monk outside. Murray gets to Monk. Pass to Wiles. This one for three. Rebound by the Hawks. And we saw some players banged up uh, down the stretch last season, Sean. I'm told that there was a focus on maybe allowing some more flexibility in physicality. It definitely upped the intensity some. And I think that's what the fans want. But there are going to be some trade-offs. And that includes free throw rates. That includes game time. And in the long haul, adding some more physicality and adding some more attention to detail defensively and allowing defenders to play more and defend more. That should be good for the game. Yeah, those were good trends, I would agree. Daniel from outside. 
That one's no good. 0 of 1 to begin the game. The Kings trail by four. Down low, Williams with the steal. Fast break, the Hawks. And he gets the whistle. Two free throws coming up. That one on Monk. And at almost seven feet tall. Bamba is hard to cover. He's adept at getting these calls inside. The Hawks have made their only other free throw attempt today in an earlier trip to the line. And when you look at their numbers from a season ago, 80% as a unit, that's something you'll be happy with. Here's what Sacramento's going with right now. DeMar DeRozan. He's checked in for Kevin Herter. And it's Fox and four Ellis. Beyond the arc. Miles no good. And hard work on the glass. Once again, guys, they put a lot of effort and focus on the backboard. Pass to Young. A three ball. Here's Porter, and the bucket is good. Three-point play chance here for him. I'm sorry, that's poor defense down low again. It's been a mismatch thus far in the paint. For Atlanta, they have yet to miss from the free throw line. They're three for three. The Kings making a switch here. Ellis has checked in. And that one misses. Well, look, there are a lot of different roles Porter Jr. can fill for your team. DeRozan finds Ellis. Good. And it's DeRozan picking up the assists. Ellis has got his first three points of the game. That's a dozen straight points coming off the triple. Bamba, a screen on Fox. Here's Young. That ball is good for another field goal. His sixth. He is six for nine on the stat sheet. Tenacious that it balances out any of the size differential in the paint. Seven foot shot. The shot by Monk is no good. And here's Young. He'll bring it up for Atlanta. Seven point differential. And following this one, he'll take on the Hornets in New Orleans. Oh, wow. What a great move inside. That is incredible. Well, you can't teach the athleticism displayed there by Johnson. And that's life above the rim. Courtesy of our AT&T 5G Slam Camp. Sacramento's gone 6 of 14 with the three ball tonight. Just a little over 40%. Here's DeRozan. His shot is good, making him a perfect two for two from the floor. The, the mid-range jumper is a high percentage shot for him. And when he's got that much room, forget about it. Pass to Johnson. Let's it go from deep. Gets the three-pointer to fall. Johnson's got the lead up to 10 now for the Hawks. And that's one way to extend the lead. Continue to light it up for long range. They have all the confidence in the world right now from the three-point line. Lyles gets to DeRozan. And he can't answer back. The three-pointer offline. And they've got a big lead, not just on the scoreboard, but really in the rebounding numbers as well. Johnson draws the double. <laughs> Fouled on the shot and picks up two points. So one free throw coming up. Another good play. This is how they built the lead, calling on the right guy at the right time. Yeah, come on. They're just having their way out there and continuing to press the advantage. Atlanta making a switch here. Lottie's checked in and a change for the Kings. Robinson's checked in. Fox passes to Robinson. Kings moving the ball around. To the paint. Here's DeRozan. And the dunk by DeRozan. Well, DeMar DeRozan's always had that vertical. If he can finish at the rim, he will. Rizaje and the dunk by Rizaje. Not the kind of aggressive defense they need to cut into the lead. Yeah, you have to protect the rim, Greg, a little bit. Yeah, I'd consider calling timeout right away after that one. The defense has to be better there. And while we've got a moment, I'd send it over to our terrific reporter, David Olin. David? Kevin, thanks. I asked Quinn Snyder what he enjoys most about coaching, and the Hawks coach said the opportunity to compete in such an intense way. Also, the tactics of the game and the intellectual part of player development. It's rewarding to see and have a part in someone's growth and improvement. 
Kevin? Maybe that's coaching, right? Growth and development. A mind for the game, for sure. I've always respected Coach Snyder. It's Robinson, top of the key. To the middle. That's good, and the Atlanta lead is cut back down to 13 with the basket coming from DeMar DeRozan. Well, they're behind, but it's certainly not because of him. He's doing everything he can. He just needs more help from his teammates. And Shams, what an absolute delight it has been having you courtside with all of us tonight. Thank you so much for taking time to join us. It has been a true pleasure. Thanks so much for the invite. I can't wait to do it again sometime. I'm honored. I'm privileged. Oh, we are going to hold you to that. Thank you again. Always so much fun to have Shams join us. No one with a better pulse on the NBA. Man, Shams is always the first guy to know about the big moves around the NBA. Love hearing what he has to say. He misses the free throw. And for De'Aaron Fox, his three-point shooting, Greg, has come a long way. In his rookie season, he only shot 30% on two attempts per game. But his volume and efficiency have both gone way up. And it's made him much more dangerous offensively. Lenz checked in for Sacramento. Keegan Murray comes in for Ellis. Here's Reza Shea. Nails the baby hook. Reza Shea's got four points in the quarter. And this has been a great job of just getting into the middle of that defense and really scoring effectively from the paint. Fox looking it over. But no one around him. Again, the miss by the King. They've shown some strength in the paint today. Their work on the boards has been impressive. Pass to Roddy. Inside, got a piece of it. And so it looks like the Hawks will retain possession here. Great energy on the deflection and a good job disrupting their offense. Yeah, there's nothing easy on offense. Coaches love seeing that kind of hustle on the defensive end. Here's Daniels, and the layup's good off the glass. And the Hawks lead by 18. And they've repeatedly probed inside in the first half, guys, and, and it's paid off. And so it's the Atlanta Hawks with an 18-point lead as the quarter comes to a close. From the field, they have been outstanding, amazing shooting. That's what has them headed to a blowout. And now we'll send it over to David Aldridge, who is standing by courtside. David. Thanks, Kevin. Trey, you've made it look easy so far. How have you been able to pick them apart? Uh, I'm just taking what the defense is giving me. Uh, open driving lanes. Uh, they're leaving some of our bigs open. Uh, pick and roll, things like that. We've got to continue to do it and uh, try to get this win. Make them pick their poison, right? Thanks for your time, man. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you, David. We'll be back after halftime for the start of the second half momentarily. Hello, everybody. Before we dig into the game at hand, let's first catch you up on the trades happening around the NBA. Adding a top player still with upside, it's an accomplishment. Porter Jr. with great length, skill, and we know he can shoot it. For him, it's been about health. When he's feeling good, he can take your offense to a whole nother level, Shaq. Yeah, but can he stay healthy? And moving on now to that first half, tough sledding so far for the Kings. You can do everything else, but if you don't take care of the boards, you're, well, you know what I'm gonna say. Uh, your goose is cooked? Uh, you're in hot water? Uh, any of those? Where were you born, eh? That'll do it for our show tonight. Thanks for joining us, and we'll send you back to Kevin Harlan for more Hoops action. We've got a second half of basketball for you. We think it's going to be pretty good. A big comeback, though, is needed for this game to be competitive, and it probably has to happen quickly. 
Really an incredible game from Michael Porter. His play so far is what fans love about him. He has gone right at the defense time and time again. Yeah, he hasn't been settling. He's getting to the rim, and that's him at his best. On the court right now for the Kings. Monk on the wing. He's paired with DeRozan. Murray out there with Alex Wen, and it's Fox in at the wall. And the basket by DeRozan. Yeah, they've had their hands full with DeRozan all night. He is scary when he gets it going. Porter in the corner. Takes a three. It falls for basket number nine from the field. He's taken 14 shots to get there. And boy, he's really in a groove. Dominant performance last game. Same thing this time out. Yeah, for sure. He is just oozing confidence. Thinks every shot is going in. They should just keep running sets for him. Team for And for those of you turning in, we're about a minute into the second half. Len passes to Fox. Shot clock at six. DeRozan for three. And that one drops. Fox has got 11. And he gives up pounds to a lot of guys defending him, but that has never kept Fox from being in attack mode. For the Sacramento Kings, GA, the expectations for this group have risen. Well, it was about just making the playoffs for this franchise and breaking that drought. Now, Kevin, it's about advancing in the postseason. Just getting there isn't good enough. Kicks it out to Johnson. The basket good off the assist from Young. Young's got four assists now tonight. Yeah, every year in the league, Johnson's become a better three-point shooter. That tells you how hard he works in the offseason. Fox a screen on Okongwu. And it's DeRozan missing. Well, after three straight makes, that's the first miss of that. Young outside. Nice ball movement here by Atlanta. Reza Shea in the corner. It's stolen by Monk. And now Sacramento on the break. Oh! The rebound by Young. The Hawks leading by 17. Slides through for his seventh basket in 11 tries. Young will find a way, even with the defender all over. And so it's Mike Brown here calling timeout. He's ready to talk things through with the team. season scored the most second chance points in the NBA. The fourth spot held by the Hawks. That's an effort stat for me. I mean, it shows you how hard this team works in the paint. They continue to pound the backboard. Sacramento with the ball. Trailing by 19. Lundgren kicks to Murray. Wants to get it to DeRozan and does. Over Johnson. Sacramento again missing. I think he got the shot he wanted inside, but somewhere on the play, he just lost focus. To the inside. Young outside. Four on the clock. And it's off from three-point range. The Kings trailed by 19. And DeRozan kicks to Monk. And once again, off the mark by Sacramento. And so Young will bring it up for the Atlanta Hawks. 19-point lead, which is the largest margin in the game. And finished off by DeRozan. Boy, DeRozan, he is on it right now and has been all night. Young finds Bamba. That's in, coming off the assist from Young. Young's got his fifth assist in this one. 
Kings have gone an even 50% to the floor here in the third quarter. Four of eight. Johnson against DeRozan. Flynn with a screen on Johnson. Here's DeRozan. Rebound Atlanta. Johnson's got his fifth rebound in this one. Greg, you know this. Good coaches give their players confidence. But what's the balance there between affirmation and accountability? Well, when you believe in a player, that also comes with expectations. So a coach has to boost them up and also demand that they deliver. And it's Risa Shea missing. Outside DeRozan. And foul on the shot. He'll shoot two at the free throw line. On top of being such a great mid-range shooter, Stan, DeMar DeRozan has earned a reputation for also being a timely scorer. He, he performs well in the clutch. Yeah, I was on the wrong end of that too many times, Kevin. <laughs> DeMar ranks in the top five among players in clutch buckets made for his career, and he was given the nickname King of the Fourth. Oh, I like that. Here's what Atlanta's going with right now. Bufkin's checked in. And Daniels subbed in for Trey Young. Back to Daniels. And he banks in the lane. Daniels has got his second bucket. Well, Daniels has good length. So this close in, he can use that to his advantage. Monk kicks to land. Murray, the pass to DeRozan. No good that time. Great tee that time from Johnson. Nice ball movement here by Atlanta. Pass to Bufkin. No good with the triple. The Kings trail by 21. Down low. And stolen by Okongwu. Here's Bamba. Banked in off the glass. Bamba's got seven points in the game. Really good at getting down the floor. When Mamba is hustling, good things often happen in transition. Lobbed up there for Fox. No hesitation at all on the alley-oop. Saw his teammate with a path to the hoop, and bang, lobbed it right up there for him to finish. And he was ready for it when he elevated and made the catch. Here's Bamba. And a good offensive board, and he gets the bucket. Bamba's got his third basket of the night. The Kings have gone just a bit under 50% from the field since halftime. Five out of 11. Rose and dishes to Fox. Over Daniels. And he buries that one, drilling the rim on the way down. He's got 15. Yeah, when Fox gets into a rhythm, he is tough. Having himself a night. The offensive rebound. Pass to Okongwu, back to Johnson, and the officials call him for a three-second violation. Yeah, a chance to look at some numbers for Malik Monk. He had a strong showing last season. Averaged 15 points a game, five assists, and three rebounds. And to have a knockdown shooter like that coming off the bench, a great asset for any coach. Absolutely. I wish I had two or three like him coming off the bench when I was coaching. If I did, I probably wouldn't be sitting here with you guys. Here's what the Atlanta Hawks have lined up on their schedule. On Sunday, they'll go up against C.J. McCollum and the New Orleans Pelicans. And then on Monday, they'll be matching up with Al Horford and the Boston Celtics. And that game against the Knicks, that one's going to be game number nine on the year for them. Really starting to get towards the meat of things by then. And he can't get the first one. You know, Stan, it seems like the Hawks have been close to taking that next step now for a couple of years. It does, Kevin, but we're still waiting, unfortunately. There's talent there, but it hasn't translated into sustained postseason success. Here's Bufkin. To the paint. There's Williams. Pass to Roddy. 
over DeRozan, and it's good. Good time running down in the shot clock. Here's Fox. 15 points in the game. Here's Murray. Ellis gets to DeRozan. Good, and the assist goes to Ellis. DeRozan's got 18 points in the game. Often DeRozan attacks in motion, but he clearly can spot up as well. Here's Daniels, and he goes in for the dunk. Never a bad idea to run the old kick play. Uh-uh, you're right. And if it produces a slam like that, we'll probably see more of them. Yeah, defensive breakdown there. Gotta communicate and switch that screen. Ellis outside. Fox passes to Len, and the dunk by Len. It's those kind of passes that bring up the entire team's confidence. Okongwu with a screen on Len. Here's Daniels. Here's Okongwu. He gets that one. Okongwu's now got his first basket of the night. And they're forcing the ball inside, and it's working like a charm. Dyson. Nine feet out. And it's sent back by Okongwu. Tries again. Lang shot is off. The Hawks leading by 21. Okongwu a screen. Daniels passes to Okongwu. Outside Williams. Just five on the clock. The Hawks need to get off a shot here. Daniels inside the line. The wing jumper off target. The shot's there for him, and he's got to take it. I don't care if he doesn't convert. That's a shot he has to continue to take. Outside, Fox. Over Daniels. Fox, no good. Well, that wasn't a bad shot. Defense playing a little loose there. Sometimes it just doesn't go in. And you can bet they weren't expecting that kind of a flashy move out of him, but that spin worked to perfection. And so it's the Atlanta Hawks in very good shape with a 23-point lead at the end of the quarter. Barring a disaster, it would appear they've got this game in the bag. We'll get right back to the action when we return. Let's take this chance now to show you the State Farm assist of the game. And he sliced the D wide open with this feed. They had no chance to prevent that basket. Now that is an elite level dig. What a great passer. And with the fourth quarter upon us, time is running out for this game to become competitive. The King shooting 43% from the field. We've got Okongwu. Daniels out there with Williams. And it's Roddy in at the three, the small forward. So that's the lineup for Atlanta. Count that one. The Hawks leading by 21. Now Daniels. Greg Reno players are not shy about criticizing officiating. Anything you'd try to change or improve with the way the game is called. I like when the players and the refs get together in the offseason to go over video examples. And I think one thing that's important is you got to have relationships between the players and the officials. And then I think the fans can also then kind of get on the same page. There are going to be missed calls out there. That will never change. Daniels passes to Okongwu. And he gets the whistle for the three-second call. Substitution on the court. The Kings trail by 19. Now, here's Monk. Miles kicks to Ellis. Some nice ball movement here by the Kings. It's good from long range. Boy, they've been terrific from beyond here in the second. 
just over a minute and a half played here in the fourth. Here's Young. Johnson outside. Back to Young. Shucks him. Whistle blows. Basket is good. So a chance here for a three-point play. Well, he may not be imposing physically, but Young's skill set enables him to score through the contact. We're talking about Trey Young here, G.A. What stands out most about him to you? Well, Kevin, I, I'd say just how confident he is, right? He, he plays with that unique energy and swagger. You love him if he's on your team and can't stand him if he's playing against you. So it's Johnson who brings the ball up for Atlanta. Outside, Porter. Reza Jay with it. Johnson, the pass to Okongwu. And they force the shot clock violation. Great team. The Kings trail by 19. And so it's Mike Brown here calling timeout. It's a chance for them to regroup and refocus. And the Kings making a change here. And checked in. King substitution. Number 25, Alex Lynn. And over two and a half minutes in the books here in the fourth. Monk kicks to Lyles. Oh, Pass to Ellis. DeRozan for three. Again, the miss by the King. Atlanta leading by 19 points. Here's Young. And it's blocked. Johnson against DeRozan. It's Porter outside. And DeMar DeRozan pulls it down. The Kings have gone three of five here in the fourth quarter. Pretty good numbers coming out of the break. Monk, left side. Ellis against Young. Shot clock at five. Ellis kicks to Lyles. And a lot of contact on that one, so he'll shoot two here. It goes on Jalen Johnson. And guys, let's get your take on the scoring breakdown so far for Atlanta. Well, I love how they're attacking the rim. That will usually force defenses to collapse and open up a lot of outside shots. And another thing, they continue to work it inside and score. It's clear their game plan is attacking the paint as much as possible. Catching up on the changes for Sacramento. Keegan Murray comes in for Lyles. And it's Fox in for DeMar DeRozan. Now, here's Fox. Not a lot of room. Again, the miss by the Kings. The Hawks leading by 17. Up top, Okongwu. Young outside. Okongwu with the screen for Young. Back to Okongwu. And Okongwu slams it in. Well, your goal there has to be to stop Young first. So that'll open up things for other people. The Kings trail by 19. Monk outside. Back to Fox. Lee Baz was put in just the right spot. 17 points for De'Aaron Fox. Yeah, this is when they need to lean on him more. Get him the ball and let him build some momentum. Pass to Okongwu. Get there, get there. Now, Reza Shea. Young from outside sinks the three-pointer. Young's got 20. Yeah, and we've come to expect this from Young. He fills it up in so many different ways. Murray looking around. Two points. That one goes. And that's almost automatic anytime he can get the ball in that position. Atlanta leading by 18. Okongwu with a screen on Fox. Pass to Okongwu. Johnson outside. Okongwu with a screen on Fox. 
Young, no good. Sacramento's gotten just one of four three-pointers to go down for them here in the fourth. Mom. And that'll be two free throws coming up. Officials on the call with the foul. That one on Rizashay. And as a coach, what were some of your favorite parts, Stan, of life on the road? Well, Kevin, you get treated really well on the road in the NBA. I mean, you travel on great charters. People take care of your bags. We stay in great hotels. But my favorite part of being on the road was when we were on our way home. Easier to win at home, family at home. That was the favorite part. How about the bonding experience that a lot of coaches talk about when you're out there kind of alone against the forces, just you and your team? Well, I definitely think players bond on trips like that because they're not going in different directions. They team to spend time together. I don't think any of them ever wanted to spend time with me. <laughs> Young up top, guarded by Fox. That one good for two. Young's got 22 points. When Trey Young's running the pick and roll, you just expect good things to happen. Come to me, come to me. Monk outside. Shot from 12. And the shot no good, a bit short. The Hawks leading by 18. Johnson with a screen on Fox. Here's Bufkin, guarded by Fox, and good that time. And so Fox will bring it up for the Kings. Pass to Len. Now here's Murray, over Johnson. Murray, good. I like Murray's mechanics on that jump shot. Simple, in rhythm, smooth, steady release. Hey, yo, right here. And here's Young. Johnson right side. And there's the shot clock violation. Couldn't get the shot off in time. The Kings trail by 18. Get on the air. Fox passes to Murray. Len with a screen on charge. For three, Murray, and Bamba pulls it down. Bamba's got five rebounds tonight. Here's Reza Shea, DeRozan defending. Charge looking around. Pocket six. Pass to Reza Shea. Offline with his three. For Sacramento, they've gone 6 of 12 from the field here in the fourth and even 50%. DeRozan passes to Murray. A load to deal with inside. The strength of Murray makes him a tough cover. And the first one drops. Hey, Greg, one thing that the Kings have had work for them over the last few seasons is their depth. And have made some shrewd moves to fill out their bench got great contributions from their 6 through 10 players. It's been a big part of their recent success. Two free throws coming up and they call the shooting foul. And Reza Shea, the prototypical size and skill for a wingman. Yeah, he's got some jelly to his game. Handle, touch at his size. That becomes very tough to contain. Looking like your classic wing. Zachary Reza Shea is 6 8 long and can hit threes. A real modern swing man. And it's a completely new group on the floor for the Kings. And this is what they wanted. I mean, to announce their presence in this matchup with authority. Very decisive. It can definitely be considered a statement win for the Hawks. And the big difference here was accuracy from three-point range. And once they started sinking shots, it really stretched out the D and created other opportunities. And anytime they got space, they seem to just knock down another triple. And so with this win, they'll move to six victories on the season. And with the win approaching, they'll take the first game here of two that they'll play against this team. Nice to get that first one out of the way and set the tone. A very solid win indeed. And when you check out the box score, there were some great numbers for Jalen Johnson. He has really stood out tonight with his work on the glass. 
You can see the extra effort coming through. Here's Ellis. Up and in on the layup. Assistant Kevin Erdner. This has been a one-sided affair. Yeah, they've done a nice job of extending their lead and maintaining that intensity level. And it's Reese Shea missing. In the corner, it's McDermott. Pass to McLaughlin. Jordan McLaughlin. There's the drive, and the dunk by Rizuche. And so Atlanta takes this one by a big margin. This game may not have been the most exciting we've ever seen, but you have to appreciate just what a clinical performance they put on. I know their fans appreciated it, and we saw at times just stretches of excellent defense. Potency from an offensive standpoint as well. They, they were pretty much dominant. And now let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's standing by from the sideline. All right, Dave. Kevin, thanks. Trey, leadership is such a key part of that point guard position, so what do you focus on with that? I'm a big guy and good in team chemistry, so any, any chance I can, go bowling, hang out with these guys, build chemistry, and uh, I think that's where it starts with the court, because that translates on. Yeah, you guys look like a tight-knit group right now, man. Congrats on the win. Kevin? Much appreciated, David. And that'll wrap it up, folks. So, for Greg Anthony, Stan Van Gundy, and our reporter David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan saying thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this presentation of the NBA on 2K Sports. And as we leave you, we give you our player of the game, Jalen Johnson.